Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and today we're going to be taking a look at creating a horizontally scrolling postcard list like you see here. We have a little heading on the left-hand side that tells us what kind of posts we're seeing, and on the right-hand side we have a scrollable section of cards. These also have a nice hover effect that kind of allows them to peek out from behind the next card. Now, if you ever browse a website called css-tricks.com, this will probably look very familiar. In fact, this is where I got the inspiration from. This website's fantastic and has tons of helpful articles around CSS and JavaScript and other things if you're a web professional. So I encourage you to check it out. But today, we're basically going to be trying to recreate this post section in Oxygen. So let's jump over here and close out these extra pages that we don't need. And let's jump into a blank page and start on this from scratch. Now, the first thing we're gonna need here is a section. So let's just get the basics covered. Let's drop in a section and let's drop two divs within that section. So one and two. So this will be our left-hand side with the heading for the section. And then the right-hand side will be our post list, and actually we may not even need a div here, so let me get rid of that. In fact, we'll actually drop in a repeater instead and keep our DOM a little bit cleaner by not nesting things when we don't need to. Now let's select our section and get some Flexbox stuff set up here. We're gonna set it to Child Element Layout Horizontal in the primary tab of the Properties pane. We're gonna align everything vertically with Stretch to make sure it's all the same height. And then horizontal item alignment can be left. And we're gonna to have to do a little bit of custom CSS anyway, so let's go ahead and set up our style sheet. So we'll call this postcards. And in here, we're going to do some things with this section. First of all, let's go ahead and give this a class. Let's call it postcards. And then we'll give this a class to these, these two items here. We'll give this postcards title wrapper. And then this one will be postcards repeater. Okay, so now over here, what we wanna do is the postcards element there, we want to add a gap to it. So let's add a gap of 16 pixels. And in fact, this gap actually needs to be applied to the inner wrap in the section. So we can just select the uh, a direct child that's a div and add the gap there. And then we'll be able to see that gap here in the preview. And because we use this direct child selector, it will not affect the other divs that are within this section later on. Okay, so now we need to give these divs a width. So the title is going to be maybe 30%. Let's try that. And then this repeater will simply fill the available space. We might have to tweak this a little bit later once we have elements in there. Let's go back to the section and give it a background color. Let's start with like a dark gray. And let's add that to our global colors, dark gray. And now this div, we wanna give it a background color of black. And we're gonna give it some border styling here. Let's add a border color of kind of a light purple, maybe something like that. Let's see what it looks like once we add some width and a style to it. That's not too bad, but I think I'd like it a little bit brighter maybe. Let's go up here more towards the blue side and crank up the brightness. Okay, and let's save that as a global color as well. Call it purple. And now let's jump down and give it a border radius of something like eight pixels. Now let's add a heading here. And we're gonna want this to be an H2 so we don't clash with any H1s on the page. And we're gonna say popular posts. We're gonna set the text color to white. And then we can go to advanced size and spacing and set the margin top to auto to make sure it's always down there at the bottom. We also could do that with the flex alignment here if we wanted to, since we're not gonna have anything else in this section. Um, so we can go bottom and right, which is where we actually want this to be. Now we need to add some padding as well. So advanced size and spacing, and let's add something like 16 pixels of padding all the way around. Now this should stretch to the height of whatever this repeater ends up being, so it'll look much, much better. And in fact, I don't think I want that text aligned to the right. I want it on the left-hand side there. Now let's go over to the repeater. 
And let's start with the repeater's query. So we're selecting the repeater, we're going to query, and we're gonna do advanced. We're gonna do edit query, and we're gonna add a parameter. We're gonna look for post type, and the type of post we want is post. And then we also wanna do posts per page, and we want there to be 10 posts displayed in this component. Now we wanna make sure we don't have any pagination, so we do no found rows, and we set that to true. Now we can close that out. Our query is all wrapped up. Our repeater obviously is not quite where it needs to be yet, but we can get started by setting it to a horizontal layout here. We're not gonna allow multi-line, but let's align everything to the middle and left. And then let's add some padding around this. I think we're gonna want quite a bit. Let's try 64 pixels here all the way around. Now that's gonna shrink this left side div. The way we can fix that is we can go to advanced layout, make sure all the flex stuff is set up correctly. And then we want to go to custom CSS and type flex shrink zero. That is going to make sure that div doesn't shrink when the other div is too big. Now this one is probably gonna need a width, but first let's go to the repeater, go to advanced, custom CSS, and put overflow X scroll. And that gets that back in order. It's no longer overflowing outside of the section. So it's starting to shape up here. Now we can start designing the elements within our repeater, so our postcards. These are going to need a class on them, so let's make sure we have the div selected. And in fact, it looks like we added our class incorrectly here, so we don't need the postcards repeater class on the div, we need it on the repeater. So we'll drop that in. And then we'll give the card, the div within the repeater, a class of postcards card. Now we can start styling this up a bit. So we want the background color to be a lighter gray than what our actual background is. And we want the width to be something pretty consistent. So we're gonna to go to advanced size and spacing. And in fact, let's jump over to the ID to add these styles. Let's set the min width to something like 300 pixels. And then for padding, let's give it 16 pixels all the way around. We're gonna to wanna to go to advanced borders and give it a border radius of something like eight pixels. Now we can start adding data to these cards. So let's add a text element. This is going to be our date of publish for this post. So let's double click and say posted on, and then we'll hit insert data and put the date. And then we're of course gonna need to make sure all our text is white within this div. So we'll select the div and go to advanced typography and set the color to white. That'll save us some work later. Now we need the title, so we're gonna use text for that as well. And in fact, let's make it a link, add the link. We'll set the link URL to the permalink of the post, and then the text needs to be the title of the post. Now, we want the text to be white, so let's select white here. And then we're going to adjust the font size to something like 32 pixels, and then the font weight to something a little heavier, like maybe 600. Now let's add a div below that. And this div is going to have, under advanced size and spacing, it's gonna have a top margin of 32 pixels. And under primary, we're gonna make sure everything's laid out horizontally, aligned to the middle and to the left. Now we can drop in an image element. And for this image, we're gonna select the featured image. You probably would do the author image if you wanted to match the CSS tricks layout one for one. But in this case, I don't have author images, so I'm just gonna use the posts featured image. So let's drop that in. And then under advanced size and spacing, let's give it a width of something like 64 pixels. And then let's go to advanced and borders, and we're going to set the border radius to a really high value. I usually do like 50 or 100% to get it rounded. Now let's add some text, and this is going to be the name of the author. So let's double click that, click insert data, and author display name, and insert that. We don't want it to be a link in this case. Now we can go back to our image, and we can add some right margin. 
maybe not 32, maybe 16 pixels. And now we have our basic card layout set up. Now, one thing I wanna do is make sure all these cards are the same height. So let's go to layout on this repeater. Let's go back to the ID, which is where we defined this before. And let's set it to stretch instead of middle. And let's save our work. Okay, now it's time to do some custom CSS work on these cards, which is where this class is gonna come in. Post dash cards underscore underscore card. Let's go into our postcards style sheet and let's start doing some stuff. So post dash cards card. First, we wanna add a transition to this. So transition 0.3 seconds, all ease in out. You could do a bunch of different stuff here, but that's usually my default. Now we need to add a negative left margin to any card that's not the first card. So we can do post cards underscore underscore card colon not colon first child. And that should select all the cards that are not the first card in the list. Now we can set margin, margin left to negative say 128 pixels. And you'll see that effect over there on the right. We're also gonna wanna add a fancy box shadow, which I generated using shadows.brum.af, but I already have it prepared, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. It's basically a loose approximation of the box shadow that is being used on css-tricks.com. And things are looking a little wonky over here, so let's just preview on the front end and make sure that's nothing that's gonna be a problem up there. It isn't, everything looks fine. So now we need to go back over here and add our hover effect for these cards. So what we wanna do is select the post cards card on hover. And when it's hovered, we want to do a transform, translate Y, negative one rem, and then we're gonna rotate it by three degrees. Now what we wanna do is we want to affect all the siblings of the hovered element that come after it. So the way we can do that is post dash cards underscore underscore card hover. And then we can use this generic sibling selector which is basically says select this element, whatever I type here, as long as it's after the first thing that we defined. So in this case, it would be post cards underscore card. And on those, those sibling elements, when a card is hovered, everything, all the cards after it need to have a transform translate X of 128 pixels. So they're going to shift over to the right and basically offset that left margin that we set up there. So let's go ahead and preview this on the front end and see where we're at, see if we have any adjustments to make. So if we hover this, you can see that it pops out, but our transition is not working. So it's likely that we made some kind of typo. We also have an issue here with these author sections not being at the bottom. So we can fix both of those pretty quickly. But first, here's our typo. Transitions is incorrect. It needs to be transition without the S at the end. Let's make sure that fixes that problem. And now you can see this smooth animating effect. And now for the author section, let's just select the div that wraps all of that stuff. And let's go to advanced size and spacing and set the margin top to auto instead. Now that these cards are going to stretch to the full height, we don't wanna set a pixel value on the top margin. In fact, we want to just use up all the space that's available and shove that to the bottom. So let's jump up to the front end and see what we have now. So we've got this nice little section. If we scroll over here, we can view the cards and we can click the post titles to go to the post. Now, one final little touch that I kind of like that they did on CSS Tricks is they added this right border. So it looks like the cards aren't just coming out of nowhere. In fact, they have this element with a box shadow on it. So what I want to do is try to emulate that. So let's go into the visual editor. So with the way our structure is built, this approach just simply will not work. We would actually have to add probably a wrapping div here and then design the after element on that and then make sure the height's all the same and it just gets messy. So what we can do instead, we're gonna just go the simpler route and we're gonna go to borders and we're gonna add a right border. This will give us a similar 
effect that will work with our scrolling. The only downfall here is that we don't get the ability to add that right side box shadow that they have on CSS Tricks. If we look over here, you can see that there's a shadow that comes from that after element. So the simplest way to now emulate that with the adjustments we've had to make is to jump into here and we can actually add an inset shadow to our repeater. So we can try to play around with that and see if it'll look decent. I think we might be able to make it work. So let's go over to advanced effects, box shadow, and let's set a shadow color of something like that, change the opacity a bit, and set it to inset. Now we can play with this offset here, right? You can see that it comes in from the left-hand side, but if we want it to come in from the right, we can set this to a negative value. So that isn't too bad. Let's set it to negative 128, so it's a little more gradual. Now the trick here is gonna be that we have some blur that causes the shadow to come in from the top as well, which we don't want. But I think we can manage that with the spread. If we set this to a negative spread of say 100, negative 100 pixels, you can see now that our top and bottom shadows, because they don't have much of an offset, aren't really visible, but the right one still is. Now with these borders, it's hard to tell, but you get a little bit of this effect where you can see the shadow stopping on the top. And it actually doesn't look too bad because we have this border on the right hand side that's kind of implying that there's some space that these cards are sliding into and out of. So let's just take a look on the front end and see how that feels. So you can see now we have this box shadow back here. It does not overlay the cards themselves, as you'll notice. So a little bit of a downfall, but it still implies the same type of effect. So as we scroll over, we can hover any of these cards and they kind of peek out so that we can see what's going on with them. And we have this implied space that they're sliding into on the right hand side. So I think that about covers it. There's a lot more you could do to spruce this up if you want to go the extra mile. You would add things like a list of categories underneath, just like CSS Tricks has. You could link the author image and name to their post archive, and you could add hover effects to the post titles. But for now, I think this covers the basis of how to get this effect using oxygen. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and thank you very much for watching.